In our previous video, we looked at the quantitative relationship between stress and strain. And we saw that there was this term, E. We called it the Young's modulus, and we said it was a characteristic of the material. Today, we're going to take a look at what happens to real materials when you change the stresses. For instance, what happens if you let the stress, you eliminate the stress, you just let the material go? Or what happens if you increase the stress, you just increase it, increase it? Where do things go wrong? To get a little bit of a feel of how this works, we're going to remember to think like we're a particle, and we're also going to go back to our parallel of a spring. Now, if we take a spring, say here, some sort of force, some sort of displacement, and we have this slope, we know that the slope of this relationship is k, and you know our relationship there was f equals kx. If this is a standard spring, we can go ahead and stretch that spring, meaning we can increase the distance, increase the force. In the same way, we can let go. We remove the force, and suddenly the displacement goes back to zero. And all of us have seen this. When we've seen springs, we've pulled them apart and we let them go and they go back to where they were. Pull them apart, let them go. And this is the beauty of springs, they just reset themselves. In the same way, when we look at our stress and strain diagram, you can imagine some little particle, it's experiencing more and more strain and the stress required to make that happen is going higher and higher. And when we let go of that material, the stress goes back to zero, and we have zero strain. And we call this elastic deformation. This means that when I let go, the spring or the material goes right back to its initial state. Now something else can happen when we're dealing with springs. We can pull this spring so far, and instead of stopping here, we just keep on pulling. Now we all know that at some point it doesn't keep acting like a spring. Rather, the material itself starts to deform and it deforms permanently. And so a lot of times you can imagine a spring where you're pulling it long and you pull it too far and then you release it and it doesn't go back to zero. We see the same thing with normal materials. We can increase the stress only to a certain point. You can imagine you're this particle. You can only take so much force. You can only stretch so much before something bad's going to happen. And in fact, we can pretend like this is the maximum stress that the material can handle. Okay, right here. What happens beyond that? Well, if you remember how a spring acts, you pull it and it just keeps on stretching and you don't have to apply as much force. That looks something like this. And this is how a material reacts once you've stretched it too much. We call this plastic deformation. So we can sense that below this point, like in this region right here, all the things we learned about a spring, they're all true. This is the elastic region. So right here with the Young's modulus, this is only true when we're talking about elastic deformation. Once we get too high, we go into plastic deformation. There's no longer that linear relationship. And in fact, we don't know what will happen. I hope this gives you a more nuanced feel of the relationship between stress and strain, especially the basics of elastic and plastic deformation. We'll explore this a little more on our next video.